storms to alert you first. This is KIMT Storm Team 3, weather coverage you can count on. Welcome back everyone. It is Friday at TGIF, am I right? Now we're going to go a little back in time right at the beginning of the day. Just a little after sunset here in Albert Lee looks pretty similar to actually what it is now, but Albert Lee has gone through quite a few changes over the last six hours from spots of sunshine to a little bit of those clouds. Then the rain started to move through. You can see it really when you're looking at the windmill farm to the back and then you can't see it. That's the rain showers moving through. Nothing too crazy, maybe a rumble of thunder, a little flash of lightning, but hey, rain is still nice. We may be out of the drought, but many of us are still on the drier side, so we'll take it while we can get it and don't worry this weekend's not going to be a complete washout we will have some chances to get out and about more on that in a moment if you're stepping out as we speak i mentioned the scattered showers and that's exactly what we're seeing some heavier pockets can be found a little further to the west including some flashes of lightning tells me that there is definitely a lot of energy here back in the atmosphere but nothing too crazy we're not expecting any severe weather here as we go through the rest of today even into our saturday Zooming in on a few of our cities here, Rochester getting a few of those sprinkles as we speak, but further along on 14 to the west, we're seeing more of that moderate rainfall. Meanwhile, Albert Lee's taking a nice break before some more pockets come our way. Moving further south, and we can see a lot of North Iowa is on the drier side at the moment, but it wasn't the case just an hour ago. We still saw plenty of rain kind of leaving Charles City, now moving through places like Elma, heading across the border towards Harmony Leroy in Minnesota. Now, moving over to the precipitation timeline and it's generally what we'll be seeing through the day. It's just these scattered showers, some of us on the drier side, some of us taking those rain showers and then the chances get a little higher as we enter the later afternoon in the early evening for more widespread rain. Sky Tracker 3 shows us just that. I'll push time forward and I do think some of this is going to be a little bit further on to the southeast, but maybe not as crazy as what we're seeing further to the west. This particular model likes to make things a little more robust, but again, there is still that possibility for some rumbles of thunder and some storms. This is around 4 p.m., pushing time to about 8 p.m., so now the sun's beginning to set, and we are starting to see more of this rain, heavier rain, become more widespread across the area, even as we kick off our Saturday. But I mentioned it's not going to be a complete washout here for the weekend. Sure, we may get rain overnight around 6 a.m., still some of it falling, but as we start to enter into the afternoon, we'll see a lot of the rain chances dwindle a little bit, we'll actually get some periods of drier conditions. This is around 4 p.m. It may be a little sticky out there, but overall, not too bad. So although we say morning showers here on Saturday and some overnight storms on Sunday, there's still going to be some great times to get out and about. Splendid dry window. This is Sean. He made this earlier today. But outdoor times will be Saturday during the p.m. hours and Sunday during the morning. Now, speaking of Sunday, I teased this right here before we went to the commercial break. Not many of us under that level one risk. In fact, the risk can be found even higher further to the west for severe weather, but it is certainly worth mentioning because there's still plenty of time for it to move eastward. So we are watching that chance for potential severe weather here on Sunday evening coming into Monday. All right, thank you for that update, Sarah. Mm -hmm.